All right, we're about to string up a 2018 Babala Pure Drive, but before I do that, and before I cut the strings out, I wanted to take a moment, uh, the opportunity. There was a recent thread on Talk Tennis forums uh, under the stringing section, and somebody was asking about why crosses break. And there's already been a couple very good responses from some people explaining it in, in very good detail. Um, I thought I would actually, since I'm about to restring this racket, and this is a, a perfect example of sort of what the thread and the discussion has been about. Um, to echo what has already been said, if you have a full bed of the same string, say, which is obviously the same gauge, then the way strings move, the mains are the ones sliding back and forth, if you're assuming you're hitting with topspin, then the mains will bend and deflect out of position and then they'll snap back into position. And it's this movement of the mains sliding back and forth along the crosses that make the mains develop notches and crosses do not. Typically, so what that means is the mains are the, are the strings that develop a notch. And here's why. If you imagine this finger is the main string and the way we're holding a racket in the plane that we're swinging, so the mains are actually, when you're hit, making contact with the ball, the mains are horizontal. And it's the crosses which are running vertical because we've, we're holding the racket sideways. So if this finger represents the, a main string and my left index finger represents a cross string, it's the mains that slide down as you hit, uh, I'm sorry, with, when you hit with top spin. Um, so they're getting pushed down by the ball because we're swinging up, it pushes the mains down. So that goes down and then it snaps back. It goes down and it snaps back. So this movement is what uh, someone else was alluding to about the mains are sawing on themselves. But if you take note of my fingers and I move the main string down and up, down and up, you'll notice if you focus on just this finger for a moment that only one spot on my index finger right here is actually making contact with this. It's, only, it's the only portion of this string that's getting worn. That's why as it goes up and down, it'll develop a notch right there. Whereas now if you focus on the, the cross string, my left index finger would representing the cross string, it's basically being abraded or as someone said, sanded down. And that's a great way to think of it. So if I put this uh, the main string on this side, as I move up and down, it's still only wearing out this spot on the back of that main. But if you look at the, I'm going all the way up and down the length of my index finger, which represents the cross string. So the, the crosses are getting slowly worn over a bigger swath and the and the main strings are being worn in a very concentrated area that's why it develops a notch so mains develop notches so when you have a full string bed of the same type of string and the same gauge it's the mains that are taking the the most of the abuse and the mains will almost always break first whether it's a full bed of multi-filament a full bed of synthetic gut or even polyester it's go the weak link is going to be in the mains once it's developed those notches and the notches just get deep enough that the notches are a third of the way through the diameter of the string or half of the diameter of the string and eventually a hit just makes the weak link break at the intersection. Um, the times where crosses will break first is when the crosses are a softer material. So this racket here um, has polyester mains and multi-filament crosses and you can see this particular person hits very high in the string bed because most of the wear is up here between the third and four, five, six, seventh crosses. This is all almost completely unworn. But if we were to cut, I'm not, obviously I'm not going to cut out just the crosses, but if you were to cut the crosses out or can focus only on the main strings, there's almost no wear. There's very, very little um, indentations or notches on these mains because they're polyester, they're a much harder material, but this multi-filament which gets abraded as these black strings move side to side, up and down and snap back, that's what's abrading these. And, and a small bit of it is from the actual contact with the ball, but most of it is the movement of the main strings. And this will happen if you have polyester mains and you have synthetic gut crosses or multi-filament crosses or gut crosses, this abrading will always be happening this way. It's just a lot easier to see it when you have multi-filament crosses because multi-filaments, the, the small little filaments on the outside of the string start fraying and, and 
um, abrading so it makes it very very clear what's happening the same thing happens to a less less marked degree with synthetic gut because synthetic gut tends, tends to be a little bit uh, harder material or have uh, fewer outer wraps to break off and, and display this kind of phenomenon um, and someone also commented about the gauges of the string so in this particular setup we've got a 17 gauge polyester we don't need a really thick polyester mains because the mains aren't what's breaking here so this multi-filament is a little bit thicker than the polyester mains that I'm using I'm using 17 gauge polyester but I'm using 16 gauge for the added durability on the multi-filament crosses imagine if I if I was still using 17 gauge polyester mains and I put in a 17 gauge multi-filament cross this would wear and break even faster than it currently is. So by using the 16 gauge multi-filament crosses, it gets more durability. Since, since in this set type of setup, the multi-filament is the weak link. Um, I think that's it, but I basically wanted to give you a, a good visual representation of this is the scenario. So there aren't many scenarios where the crosses will break first, but if you have a much harder or thicker main string and a much softer or thinner cross string, the crosses may go first uh, due to this abrading uh, type of thing. So um, I think also in one of my old videos, uh, I think it's just titled Poor Racket Stringing or something like that. So if you go through and find my other video uh, about poor racket stringing, um, this is kind of brought up a little bit um, because the racket that's in that video has broken crosses, which were also multi-filament. And uh, somebody had commented something to the effect to, uh, about the, the, way the, 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 the way the racket was strong or the way that the... For so, I can't remember what it was, but somebody had a comment about how um, regarding the crosses being broken. And I said, um, I think they might have said that the, they thought that the player was hitting the ball late or something like that. Um, or had bad technique or something and, and the, the player she has good technique it's just I, and I explained in my response that it's just a matter of the crosses are a multi-filament and the polyester is in the mains and so the multi-filament's the weak link it's what's going to go so anyway kind of rambled on but um, there's sort of a little bit of a verbal explanation and a visual uh, representation of when crosses will wear out slash break first Thanks.